Right, just as a little extra, um, I thought I'd make a quick video just showing you um, the supernova and lens flare effects and what they uh, what they do. Uh, so we'll start off with supernova. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new layer to put the supernova on. Um, so right at the very top, uh, let's create this new layer and I am going to call it uh, supernova. We all know what a supernova is, right? It is a supergiant star that has run out of um, hydrogen and helium fuel to sustain it and it collapses under its own weight and then is an enormous astronomically large explosion uh, which kills the star, turns it into a black hole and uh, there you go. But uh, what a supernova is in GIMP is something totally different. So I'm going to stick this on normal, I'm going to make sure it's, it's set to normal uh, and I'm going to keep it um, as transparent. So there we go. Uh, now there's nothing on the layer at the moment. If I go to filters and then go to light and shadow, supernova, uh, you'll notice it has drawn this, well, what I guess what looks like an exploding star. Uh, so maybe we want said exploding star to be uh, coming out of uh, this girl's um, headband. Now it looks kind of crazy here. You can see as I move it around, uh, what happens is it tends to get bigger. You'll notice the further away from that little cross there that I make it, the bigger the thing gets. Okay, so there's two there's two things that you can move around here. You can move the position of the supernova itself, and you can move the uh, the size of the um, of the explosion, if you like. Okay, so um, if we want it to appear there, you can also change the color. Uh, maybe we want it to be a, uh, a sort of red color, but you'll notice how uh, it doesn't just change the color of the uh, of the thing itself. It also changes the uh, the color of the light that the whole uh, image is bathed with. So if I change it to red, um, and maybe um, let's adjust the number of spokes, you can have a very uh, uh, very high definition supernova, you can have a very low definition supernova, or even just a round dot um, if you wanted it to look like a look like a sun. Um, don't know what random. Oh, that looks pretty funky. I didn't know you could do that. That looks cool. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's make this uh, the uh, astral projection supernova or something like that. Um, let's just reduce it down a little bit like that. Um, I mean, that looks kind of cool. Um, not sure whether random seed uh, is just going to change the um, uh, the order that those random colours come in. Um, you can randomise the random seed as well. So I mean, that's that's basically a supernova, and uh, obviously it uh, creates that object on that layer. If I make all the other layers invisible, you can see there's there's the supernova, um, and um, that's that's that. The other thing as well, which I think is a slightly uh, less intense and a more aesthetically pleasing um, modification, is the addition of a lens flare. Now the problem with lens flare is if we just create a new um, layer, let's create this new layer here, let's call it a lens flare. Uh, I'm going to make sure the mode is set to normal and it's filled with transparency. When I click OK, uh, I get my new layer. If I go to uh, filters and then lens flare, which is under sh light and shadow, there's lens flare. Um, there's nothing appearing on there. That's because lens flare um, only applies to whatever layer you've got selected. Not to worry though, um, because what you can do as I've shown you before, if you right click um, and then select um, new from visible, you'll get a new layer. Now this layer has everything that's on it, so you won't be able to sort of like edit the bits underneath and see changes. If you wanted to reapply the lens flare, you'd have to uh, create a new layer from visible. Uh, I'm just going to bin off that uh, lens flare um, layer that I created there, and I'm going to call um, I'm going to call this final with flare. 
Okay, so now if I go to um, filters and go to light and shadow, I can then select lens flare and uh, you can move the lens flare around uh, according to its X position and its Y position. Uh, I am going to make the lens flare appear uh, like it's excess light coming in through the trees. Um, where are we going to have it? Something like that. Go to OK. And there you go. I think that's a, a pretty nice looking image. So try out Supernova, try out Lens Flare, um, and uh, have a have a play around.